Hi, and welcome to the Horizons Edge channel, featuring profiles from the Titanic, the series where we take a look at the people who tragically lost their lives aboard the RMS Titanic in 1912. Earlier, I had done a profile of the Titanic band leader, Wallace Henry Hartley, and I'm including the link to that profile down below so you can check that out. But after that one came out, I received several comments about possibly doing another profile on the rest of the Titanic musicians, and the time has come. So here in April of 2024, in honor of the 112th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic, this profile will be about the other seven musicians that were on board the Titanic. I'll be going over each of their biographies, and then we'll discuss what the musicians did once the Titanic struck the iceberg. Information on the Titanic musicians has been tremendously helped over the years by the excellent research of Titanic author and historian George Behe. He's published several books on the Titanic, and the information I'm going to share with you today in this profile comes from his self-published book called Those Brave Fellows, The Last Hours of the Titanic's Band, released in 2020. If you want the most in-depth coverage of the band members, this is the book you have to have in your Titanic library. I'm also including a link to the place where you can buy it down in the description below. One thing to keep in mind before we begin is that out of the eight musicians on board, not one of them survived the sinking. And what's more, as we go through the list of the band members, we're struck by how young they were. Out of the eight musicians, five of them were only in their 20s, so they were quite young. Many of them had known or played in music ensembles together, so they knew of each other to some degree. Another note is that the musicians were not employees of the White Star Line. They were contract musicians placed on board the ships by a music talent agency, the CW and FN Black Company, started by two brothers. That organization had contracts with the shipping lines, and they provided the musicians that would play on board the ships. The musicians on the Titanic received second-class tickets, and their cabins were in second class as well on E-Deck. One thing to note is that they did not have cabins that were all in one location on the ship together. The musicians basically operated as two separate groups when they played on board. There was a quintet that played in certain first and second class areas, and then there was also a trio, which primarily played in the a la carte restaurant near the aft staircase reception room on B deck. The quintet had their cabins closer to the bow of the ship, while the trio were berthed at the aft end of Scotland Road, a main thoroughfare throughout the ship on E deck. So let's begin our profile in getting to know the Titanic musicians. I'll introduce the band members by age, starting with the oldest. Percy Taylor was born in London in 1872. His father died in 1890, and by that time the family lived in Peckham, where Percy worked as a clerk. By 1906, Taylor is said to have been working as an accountant and he married a widow named Clara Davis. By all accounts, the marriage apparently was not a happy one. They had no children. By 1911, Clara was back living with her parents, and Percy was thinking about moving to New York to start a new life. On April 10, 1912, Percy Taylor boarded the Titanic as a cellist in the ship's orchestra. He was 40 years old. At 33 years old, band leader Wallace Henry Hartley was the second oldest of the group. Please check the description down below so you can see the profile I've already done on him. Just one year younger than Hartley at 32 years old was John Woodward. Born in Staffordshire in 1879, his father died when he was only five years old. His family moved to Oxford by 1901, and at that time, John was making his living as a cello player after attending the Royal Academy of Music. In the following years, he played with a variety of orchestras until December of 1910, when he sailed for Kingston, Jamaica, to play a stint at the Constant Spring Hotel. It was here that he met and played with another of the future Titanic musicians, John Hume. After returning to England in 1911, Woodward signed on to play on board the White Star Liner Olympic for her maiden voyage in June of that year. After several voyages, he transferred to the Cunard Liner Coronia, but by this time, he was planning on giving up the life at sea and seek a job playing with another orchestra in England. In 1912, he was living with his mother and had become engaged to a young woman. John Woodward took his cello with him when he boarded the RMS Titanic at Southampton on April 10, 1912. At age 28, John Clark was born in Manchester, England in 1883. By 1891, he was living with his grandparents in Liverpool. Records indicate that in 1901 he was working as an insurance clerk 
but by 1911 he was listed as being a musician. He played with the Argyle Theatre of Varieties, as well as the Liverpool Philharmonic Band, as a bass violinist. In April of 1912, the Black Company recruited him to make a single trip as a musician on board the newest luxury liner, the RMS Titanic. He accepted the offer and prepared to make his first ocean voyage. In a cruel irony, it is said that he told some friends that it would be his luck to go down with the ship as he laughed about it. John Clark boarded the Titanic on April 10, 1912. William Braley was born in 1887 in Essex, England. His father's interest in spiritualism made him known to another future Titanic passenger, W.T. Stead, the influential journalist. I also have a profile on him as well. After his schooling, Braley joined the Pier Pavilion Orchestra and by 1911 was listed in the census as being a pianist and a professor of music. He also had sailed on board various ocean liners and served aboard the Carpathia before being transferred to the RMS Titanic. It was said that his father warned him about sailing on the Titanic, but the younger Braley disregarded his father's warning. William was 24 years old in 1912. Georges Crins was born in Paris, France in 1889 and moved with his family to Belgium in 1895. He eventually entered the Royal Music Conservatory in Liège, Belgium, and studied there until 1908. He was very successful, winning awards throughout the years for playing violin. After playing in several symphonies during the next couple of years, he moved to London and played at the Ritz Hotel until March of 1912. He was considering a military career, but it was at this point that the Black Agency recruited him to play violin on board the new White Star liner, the RMS Titanic. George Crean's was 23 years old. John Hume was born in Dumfries, Scotland in 1890. His father tutored him at home on the violin, and it was said that he played so well that by his teens, John was performing at church as well as at the Theatre Royale. After unsuccessful jobs as a desk clerk, Jock Hume, as he was called, married Alice Alston for a while. He went to sea as a musician, serving on board quite a few ocean liners. He apparently also had a girlfriend named Mary Costin. In December of 1910, he sailed to Kingston, Jamaica, to play a three-month stint at a hotel there, and it was here that he met future Titanic bandmate John Woodward. He had a short fling with a Jamaican barmaid, and after he left Jamaica in April of 1911, discovered that the woman was pregnant with his child. He eventually was planning to marry his girlfriend Mary, but as he sailed away on a month-long trip to the Mediterranean in March of 1912, he discovered that Mary was also pregnant. Upon his return, he traveled to Southampton to join the musicians on board the Titanic to serve as one of her violinists. Jock Hume was just 21 years old. Roger Bricou was just 20 years old and the youngest of the Titanic musicians when he checked on board the Titanic in April of 1912. He was born in 1891 in France and, due to a motorcycle accident, walked with an awkward gait. He was already making his living as a cellist in Lille, France, when in April of 1911 he traveled to England to see if he could play there. After performing and having success, he was offered a two-month trial period by the Black Talent Agency in February of 1912, during which he was a member of several groups on board ocean-going vessels. It was during this time on board the Carpathia that he befriended future Titanic musician William Braley. Upon his return to England, he ended up in Liverpool, and it was there he was notified that he was to be assigned to the newest White Star liner, the RMS Titanic. He boarded the train in Liverpool and traveled to Southampton along with band leader Wallace Hartley. They boarded the ship on April 10th along with all the other musicians. But what was life like on board the ship as a musician? As already mentioned, the group actually played as two bands on board, a quintet and a trio. It has been generally assumed that the trio was made up of pianist Braley, violinist Crins, and cellist Bricou. The quintet was filled out by the rest of the group, but it is not known definitively, since no official documentation exists, of exactly how the men were divided, and several of them actually played more than one instrument. The daily schedule for the quintet consisted of playing approximately six hours throughout the day at various locations in first and second class, one hour at each location. When the Titanic struck the iceberg, it was already late at night, 11.40 p.m., so no music was being played at the time. But reports indicate that by 12.15 or so, several stewards related that they saw some of the musicians hurrying topside carrying their instruments. 
They were confused as to why musicians would be running with their instruments, but later on they found out it was because they were going to play for the passengers during the loading of the lifeboats. Apparently, it is not decisively known whether the order to play came from the captain or from the musicians themselves who felt that it was what they needed to do. But the music played throughout the entire ordeal to help keep the passengers calm. They played everything from rousing marches to ragtime and other cheerful music of the day during the early part of the evacuation. Many of the survivors attested to the music throughout the frightful experience. But where exactly were the musicians playing? Going by the detailed analysis conducted by author George Behe, after studying many of the eyewitness accounts, he concludes that the band began playing near the top of the Grand Staircase reception area just inside the first-class boat deck entrance. This was a location they would normally play at every day at 11 a.m., and it also housed a piano. It would make sense since this was the gathering area for passengers getting ready to load onto the lifeboats from the boat deck, which is where the lifeboats were stored. And also remember that it was freezing outside, with air temperatures right at 31 degrees Fahrenheit. Mostly, it was remembered by survivors that the musicians did not wear their life belts because they found it hard to play with them on. But there is evidence that in the end, at least three of them did put the life belt on. More on that in a bit. Eyewitness accounts have the musicians leaving the reception area and moving outside onto the boat deck itself at approximately 1.45 or 1.50 a.m. This was just 30 minutes prior to the Titanic going under. By that time, the reception room where they had been playing was empty. The band set up just outside the boat deck entrance, and it was here where they stayed until the very end. This brings us to the controversial question of the playing of Nearer My God to Thee. Some believe that the song was never even played. Some believe that it was actually a song called Autumn. However, going by George Behe's exhaustive research into the matter, pouring over first-hand eyewitness accounts, he states that, in his opinion, Near My God to Thee was not only played that night, but was apparently the last piece of music performed by the Titanic bandsman. He goes on to state that it appears that Arthur Sullivan's Proprior Deo was probably the version of Near My God to Thee that was played on board the Titanic while the vessel was sinking. All eight musicians died in the sinking. However, the recovery ship eventually pulled three of their bodies out of the sea. All three had apparently been wearing their life belts at the end. The three were band leader Wallace Henry Hartley, John Clark, and Jock Hume. Hartley's body was returned to England, where 30 to 40,000 people attended his funeral. Clark and Hume were buried in the Titanic graveyard in Halifax, Nova Scotia. It was said just after the tragedy that the musicians, knowing that they were doomed as a result of their own heroism, the members of the ship's orchestra thus commended their souls to God, giving expression to their petition in the notes of their instruments. They will be remembered for their service, and their music will be heard forevermore. Thanks for watching Profiles from the Titanic.